We're on the banks of the River Trent today. And as you can see, the river's in flood today. It's very chocolate coloured, absolutely tanking through, but there's still some fish to be caught. So who better to be sat with than river legend and one of my angling heroes, Wayne Swinsco. And we've come to fish the pole feeder today. And we've already had a nice big roach on it. So I just thought we'd see how Wayne goes about catching these fish. So how are you getting on, Wayne? Well, it's not too bad really. I mean, it's, um, the river's quite high and it's been high for a while and it's probably the coldest spell we've had yeah. um, for a few weeks now and uh, it has quietened everything down, but we are getting the odd bite, odd indication. We'd say we've had a nice roach. Mm -hmm. So um, why would you fish a pole feeder and not a normal feeder or a float? Well, the river's pushing through a lot today and we want to be really accurate with our feed. Yeah. The river's been up a long while, so the fish will tend to have pushed into the edges a bit yeah. more. Yeah. So we can target them closer in. Yeah. And it's just a very accurate way of fishing. Yeah, because you've got a nice little steady area there. Yeah. You're using a margin pole today as well, aren't you? So, and, you and you are fishing, what, that's nine and a half metres? Nine and a half metres so. out into the river. It's about probably getting on for eight foot deep. Yeah. It's a nice flat bottom. And uh -huh. we can present our bait perfectly. Yeah, yeah, and everything's so accurate, isn't it? I yeah. mean, you, you, you're never that accurate just underarming a feeder on that. No, line, you can't you? be, it's impossible. You're directly over it. I, I suppose, drop. can you use a smaller feeder as well? It can vary the size of feeder you want. I like yep. to have a nice size feeder on, be positive and put plenty of bait in. Okay. Basically because I want to just try and have a spell, probably two or three times in the match where I can locate two or three fish at a time. Yeah. If I was using a small feeder and just trickling a tiny bit of bait in, yeah. I don't think them fish would line up so well. Yeah, because we're not after loads of fish today. Oh, it's a hard day. You know, um, half a dozen fish would be brilliant oh, today, wouldn't it? would be fantastic it? to catch yeah. two or three bream and, and a couple of skimmers. That, yeah. that, that would be really good. But it's a nice positive method as well, isn't it? So you could hook anything. You could hook a barbel well, today. Well, in this area, there is barbel. There's the odd big chub, but it's mostly bream and skimmers yeah. and hybrids. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, you're using one uh, a pole feeder this size today, aren't yeah, you? So, yeah. And I notice it's got a, a weight at the bottom as well. Yeah, the legs around the bottom, it just sits flat exactly on your arm yeah. like that. So you're lowering it straight down. I'm lowering it straight down, and that it's just filtering out through the current that's right. going through it. And what dictates the size of the, the feeder then? Because you've got some smaller ones, I see. I've got some in my yeah, pocket, well it's, actually. It's just, you know, if I was going on sort of a, going to catch roach somewhere and there was no bream and things like that, yeah. I'd be using something like that with not so much bait in yeah. it. Yeah, that's a smaller cage feeder, again with the weight at the bottom. Yeah. And there's a, a plastic size there as yeah. well, isn't there? So, yeah. So you're generally using ground bait with this method? Using ground bait, yeah. yeah. Um, plenty of ground bait, plenty of loose particles in it. Yeah. I want to be very positive. Yeah, I imagine with the water being really coloured, you want to want to put some scent in there as yeah, well. Yeah, I've... To my, today I'm fishing with uh, Pro Natural ground bait, dark and light. Yeah. And I've added some... Um, two different things. I've added some fish meal. OK. Um, 250 ml of fish meal. There's no fish meal in this ground bait to start with. Yeah. And then I've added quite a lot of brasm. Okay. Brasm's a very sweet, very creamy sweet. additive, yeah. isn't it's it? It's basically just to create a smell that fish can own in on it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, shall we ship back your rig and have a look and see how you set it up? Right, so, oh, so you've just got it on a like a fixed pattern oster there? Basically, I've just got it on a fixed pattern oster, and something like um, two and a half foot hook length. Yeah. And I've just got, basically, my rig line is 020 main, 022, sorry, main yeah, line. Yeah, nice and strong. Nice and strong. I don't want to have any disasters with it. Um, if it gets stuck on the bottom, then you do get a disaster. Yeah. But then I've gone down to an 018 hook length, just loop to loop, dead simple. Yeah. And I've got a number eight shot there. And what's that shot doing there? Basically, it's just holding it, just stopping it from floating about when the boils come. Okay. Um, it, and sometimes when there's a lot of debris in the river, like grass and leaves that's been thrown up, sometimes you can actually, by having that shot on and moving it closer to the hook, it'll stop a lot of the... Um, oh, right. So it keeps your hook bait. Leaves. Yeah, you can keep the hook bait yeah. that much cleaner. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. it might only be 30 seconds or a minute, but it does give you that more chance yeah. of getting a bite. And I see you've got a nice big hook bait on there, a yeah. bit of worm. And is that a caster or a maggot? No, that's just a caster, caster. and a maggot on there. You right. know, like a third of a lobworm, which yeah. is probably the best bait on Trent in winter. Yeah. It has been for a long while. Right. And I'm just putting casters, um, dead maggots, and a few bits of lobworm and dandrobinus through the feeder all the time. All right, we'll bait it up. Let's see you ship it out and lower it in. So how often are you, you leaving it in there for between well, bites? Well, roughly, 
it's difficult to tell, but I would say pretty pretty quick, like four or five minutes to start with and end the session. I did yeah. cook six balls in it at the start okay. as well yeah. before I started lowering it in. Yeah. But the longer it goes on, probably I'm going to be leaving it, you know, five to seven, eight minutes, something like that, or till I, or till I can get a ratio for my bite. And I see you're, you're wrapping it around a, um, a cable tie on the end Very of the pole Very important there as when well. you're swinging it out. You don't want to clip the water and right. lose any of your ground bait. But there's another thing, when you do put these tie wraps on, whenever you put your cable tie on, try to get it on your joint where it's, where it's strong. Right, yeah. Because you can, t you can actually tighten them up and crack your pole if you're not careful. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's ship out and see uh, see how you're lowering it in. Yeah, so that keeps everything away from your keep net, away from above the, the water, yep. so you're not... So just shipping out like that, straight out, and when you get to the area you're going to fish, you just twist it around twist like it, that and it release swings the off. feeder. Just put your pole in between your legs, exactly where you're going to do yep. it every time. So I suppose you line it up with a far bank yep. marker. I'm just into that shadow of that tree there. Yeah and just lower it in like that and just keep everything tight. And you'll, you can feel it dunk when it's at the bottom yeah. and that's it. Yeah. Okay, so there's no quiver tip or and there's no float involved in this, but you've got a bit of elastic hanging from the end of the pole, haven't you? So that's your obviously your bite indicator today. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, it's basically, it's a length of elastic. You can make them up to what you want. Mine's probably about 10 inches long. Yeah. And that um, is fixed onto your main line and there's a loop on each end, one, of your, one on your main line, one on your elastic, which goes okay. onto your connector. Right. And in between, where it's fixed on, you, you can draw a loop of line out. Um, so the elastic's shorter than the so loop. So the elastic's short. So all the time, when my, that elastic's tensioned and I've got a loop of line to the end of yeah. the pole. And when that, that allows that, um, when the bike comes, that allows that indicator to be pulled underwater. Okay. Without tightening that last yeah. that loop up too much yeah. so it's basically free it's not a free running but yeah. it looks like it's free running and so, you, it's so it's so um delicate yeah so you're not actually fishing the, the elastic's not actually playing the fish is it no. it's purely by the, the no. line still taking the strain isn't when it? you pick the pole up the loop in the in the rig yeah. tightens up and then you're playing yeah. your fish yeah on your main pole yeah. elastic I mean, it's, it, it sounds quite complicated, but actually in practice, it, it works quite well, doesn't it? I mean, I saw that roach you had earlier, and it, you could proper see those little jags, and you could knew, knew it exactly when to strike, just like watching a quiver tip or watching a pole float. So. It's actually super. It's actually dead easy to do it, yeah. and dead easy to, okay. you know, once you've done it a couple of times, you're away. It's yeah. just, basically, the, the thing that you need to get right, you need to have your pole... At, straight at, down. Straight down, yeah. 90 degrees to you, really, mm -hmm. and straight off the end of it and it's just setting the depth up right yeah so that, that when your feeder hits the bottom that just takes up the tension like yeah. that yeah that's fixed the end of your pole and that's your that's your indicator there yeah. and that's just taking the tension of the flow up basically yeah and when you get a bite it just pulls down yeah. like that oh brilliant yeah and that loop of line is from there going through that connector yeah so that will bottom out so and then, bottom out then, then you're in business because you've actually got st much stronger elastic through the pole. That's what's actually yeah, playing I've the got, fish, isn't it? Yeah, uh, Drennan pink bungee through pink the bungee, pole. Yeah. Which Substantial elastic, but you don't know what you're going to hook. You don't know what you're going to hook. You could have a you could have a roach six or eight ounce, or you could have a ten pound yeah. barbell on there. And obviously so. you've got a big feeder as well, so yeah. it's all and a big hook, so yeah. it's all balanced, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. I mean, being that accurate and being able to search down the peg, you just can't get that sort of accuracy with a running line approach, can you? No, I mean, if I was under, underhand in the feeder here, if you got it within two or three feet every time, you'd be, you'd be happy. Yeah. But with this method, you can actually move down your peg a little bit. Mm -hmm. Once you've had a few fish in a certain area, sometimes they back off, and you can just actually lift your pole, take your feeder off, put a bomb on, and just work your way down yeah. your peg a bit, yeah. keeping it dead still on the bar. Yeah, I think if you, you know, if you are only after three, four, five bites from quality fish, it's nice confidence knowing you're bang on the money aren't you and exactly you know, your, your feeder and your hook bait is going in the same place every single time at some point you hope a fish is going to find that hook bait don't you exactly and at some point there will be a shoal of fish that will come up to that bait yeah the, the, in winter there will be some sort of yeah. feeding pattern with maybe 20 minutes half an hour or what but they will have a go maybe with a change of light you never know well, but you'll be bang on the money doing it you said a change in light the sun's out a little bit now it just does feel that two or three degrees warmer and we're moving towards the end of the day if you're going to get a fish now's the time isn't it so 
Let's hope you do. Yeah, let's um, keep his fingers crossed. I think we might get another one. Hopefully it's a nice big bream. Well, we're in the area <laughs> to catch bream and skimmers, so yeah, yeah. let's hope so.